All right. And um, our presenter today is Paul Shipley. He is a specialist with the University of Maryland Agricultural Nutrient Management Program. He has been here for a very long time since. <laughs> what year was it, Paul? Time immemorial. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Um, very long Previous time. Age. So. Yeah. yeah, right near the start of the program, I guess. So, yeah. <laughs> um, so he's he's got great historic knowledge of our program and a wealth of knowledge in running Russell too, and hopefully he can kind of simplify it for you here today. Um, and again, this recording will be available for you to go back and reference. So, thank you, Paul. Thank you, Emily. Uh, now, are you seeing my um, PowerPoint? I see your um, yeah, I see the PowerPoint. Okay. Yeah, you go so, ahead and and then yeah just swap those screens okay looking good thank you okay uh, good afternoon everybody happy new year to everyone um today <laughs> we're gonna uh, look at a, a simpler way to use the Rust russell 2 program um you know a, a lot of times uh, people are intimidated. It looks like a, a huge learning curve when you first open the program and there's lots of different options and lots of different ways of doing things. So we're, we're gonna look at a, a simpler way today of um, you know, using the Russell 2 program with, with a lot of the stuff that's built into it. And the whole reason we're, we need to do this is um, that Russell is a required component when we calculate the PMT um, uh, before before there was the PMT and PSI, um, we left all the soil erosion calculations to NRCS. <laughs> and um, you know, if if and then we when we first needed it, we would get it from the soil conservation um, and water quality plans. But it, it got to the point where we had so many people who needed PSI, so we really needed a, a system to learn how to do erosion calculations ourselves. So that's. Uh, <laughs> That's uh, when we started uh, using Russell 2, that came out probably early 2000s. And so um, there's a little bit of background we need to cover before we get into using Russell 2. There's some things we need to have ahead of time before we come into the program. Uh, and, and one of those is um, understanding what we're measuring um, when, we're, when we're trying to look at erosion. Uh, when this first started, we would have to go out to the field and um, shoot slopes with a clinometer and measure length of slope and kind of walk around to get the lay of the land and um, to understand exactly what's going on in the field. Because um, <laughs> uh, when we're looking at soil erosion, uh, we're looking at, um, it, it requires three steps, um, detachment, transport, deposition. And what Russell 2 measures is um, uh, sheet erosion and real erosion. So the, the sheet erosion is uniform removal of soil in thin layers by the force of raindrops over, and overland flow. And it occurs between rills. And then the real erosion, you can see the rills here. Um, Emily, can you see my cursor? Yes, I can. Okay. So um, Russell 2 also measures real erosion, removal of soil by concentrated water running through streamlets. Um, what it does not measure is gully erosion. So this, uh, and so if you if you look at this depiction of a field, so Russell's uh, Russell 2 is measuring the, the interrail, the real erosion, but once you get to a point of, of concentrated flow, um, Russell 2 does not measure that. And so these are, uh, ephemeral gullies, um, they can be removed by tillage, but they form each year in the same place. <laughs> and so when measuring um, the slope and length of slope in, in Russell, we only look at areas of the field where, the, where there is sheet and rill, and then we, we measure the length of slope down to where we either see deposition or uh, concentrated flow. And so here's, here's an example of how we, we would shoot slopes that we would uh, put into Russell 2 later. So we're looking at um, the direction of water. This is a compound field where it's running from different uh, places in the field to different directions, but basically all coming out of the field down, down at this level. And so again, so when, uh, when we measured before, we would, we would uh, start 
um, our, our measurement for the slope at the at the shoulder of a hill and measured down to the point where you, you would start to see soil um, being deposited. <clears throat> or, it, you know, in a case where, you know, maybe it was a flatter when you got to an area of concentrated flow. <laughs> um, and, and one thing, uh, you know, as I mentioned, we, we used to do that um, in person. Um, I guess for the past um, five or six years, thanks to the, the work of Brian Kalmbach and, um, <coughs> and um, you know, um, our consultant, Craig Yan, um, we now have access to QGIS program, which makes um, the measurement of slopes and distance to surface water much easier. Uh, now to review just the, the factors we're looking at going into the Russell calculation. So A is the tons of soil loss per acre per year. And it um, includes these factors. So R is the rainfall. K is the erodibility factor, uh, which is um, intrinsic to, to the specific soil map unit. Um, depends on texture, structure, organic matter, per permeability. And then the um, LS factor, uh, both the steepness and the length. Uh, and then the C factor and P factor are are things that um, Russell too provides us a lot of, of information and data for that. It's a very powerful program as far as um, calculating residue and crop canopy and you know kind of the, the estimation of how how much coverage there is of the soil throughout the course of the growing season. So so again, uh, before we can start using Russell two, we need uh, to get a couple of these factors um, that we need to input. And so um, for the soil erodibility, um, in the past, we generally get that from the web soil survey. Um, with the QGIS program now, we have a layer of the soil map units for the entire state. So if you use that, um, sometimes it's it's beneficial. You can go in and if, if you can tell clearly that um, a map unit is a the dominant that uh, unit of the field, um, then it, you can kind of get a picture of the whole farm and, and you can kind of do it easier. Uh, in web soil survey, we have to kind of go through um, one field at a time. And then it does have a useful tool that once you've outlined the field, it will tell you the um, dominant map unit in the field. And then uh, and then from QGIS, we also, you know, again, we get the, the uh, slope length and steepness. And so uh, just to let you know that these resources are here, if you haven't seen them before, uh, we have uh, links to and, and tutorials on the web soil survey under plan writing tools, um, you know, PMT section of that. And then on our uh, software page, we have um, information and downloads for QGIS. So so here's the example. We, we have this, um, this fact sheet that basically will take you through the steps of um, using web soil survey to, to get your soil map units and find out the dominant one. And then uh, on our software page, if you go to the QGIS section, um, there's a there's a bunch of tutorials just to introduce you to Q, QGIS and how to use it. And it's actually, um, the, with the latest version, it, it makes it much easier to uh, kind of outline fields uh, within QGIS before we would have to do it in Google Earth and import it. But there's a, a nice tutorial now on how to do that uh, within QGIS. And then the, the key for using Russell 2 is this lesson five, which shows you how to use QGIS to determine uh, the slope, length of slope, and then also distance to surface water that you'll also need in calculating the PMT. And so this is an example of a QGIS screen. Um, and so you see uh, one, one of the layers built in is the elevation data. And actually, we have um, layers of uh, topo maps for a lot of counties for one, one foot, two foot, and three foot um, uh, contours. And uh, so based on these contours, we can look at this and try to see how water is flowing off the field. We can look at the point where we think um, you'll start to have um, movement. Uh, so as you see, the contours get closer together. It's, it, uh, here, it's steeper. And then as it starts to level out, or in this case, there's concentrated flow, so you would stop there. 
And then in these cases, um, a lot of times it's a judgment call, but you would, again, look to see where um, you might have a steeper area and then it would start to level out. And that's where you would assume deposition is occurring. And then we also have uh, stream layers where you can, again, measure the distance of surface water um, when you'll, you'll also need that data to input when you're doing the PMT. And then um, getting to Russell too, if you don't already have that on your computer, this is also on our software page under this uh, section, Russell 2. Uh, there's a lot of useful information in there on how to, um, let's see, uh, they, they've recently changed how to update their soil. So this is a new um, uh, fact sheet on that. We have a, a instructions on downloading, installing, and setting it up. Uh, just um, a lot of the stuff in, in Newman, uh, I'm sorry, in Russell 2, is based on um, operations and abbreviations. So we, we have information on that. Um, let's see, the Russell 2 abbreviations guide. Yeah, you'll see when you're choosing a, a crop management um, rotation, um, a lot of the part of the name is was um, abbreviations. And so this guide tells you what those abbreviations are. And then there's the, the um, NRCS version, uh, which goes into more detail um, on things that versions of, of Russell 2 that they use, for instance, for um, um, in installing uh, contours, terraces, and um, and stuff like that. Okay, so once you've downloaded it and installed, um, you know, you get to the point where uh, it'll it'll load um, a shortcut for you, and you just double click on it. It'll, it'll look like this, and it brings you into the program. And so again, there, there are a lot of different functions in this program. Um, and most of these uh, are very powerful tools, very useful tools for NRCS specialists to build a lot of the crop rotation. And we have the um, benefit that they, they've pre-built a lot of these ahead of time. So um, one thing um, that, that's a good way of using the program is to kind of use what's, what's already been built by NRCS. Um, before we get started, though, um, it's it's a very complex um, database with with a lot of um, a lot of tools and a lot of different ways of looking at the data. And so, for our purposes, we want to use the the simple template. And so, before you get started, you want to check this lower right hand corner. It tells you what database you're using. Um, you can kind of make backups and. Um, and um, you can load a different database in. Um, you know, if you lose a database, you can you, you can load your backup in and pull it in here. Um, and it, the field office is something that's is pretty much automatically installed when you install the program. But the um, the template that you want to use um, when you first enter the program and ask you which one you want to use, and the one that we use um, is the NRCS Simple right here. And so if that's not the one you see, there's a, a way to load that. So if you right click on whatever else is in this um, in this um, box here, you right click, you'll get this menu, and then you just hit load. And then it'll, it'll take you to the folder on your computer where that information is saved. And you'll just go ahead and select the NRCS simple, and then go ahead and open it. And then from that point on, that'll be the the template that opens when you run the program. Okay, so to get to the, the really streamed way, streamlined way of using this program, that for most cases, um, you, you can um, do a lot of your calculations just using two, um, two of the icons here. So this um, yellow clipboard is for building um, rotations with, for the C factor part of Russell 2. And then once you have those built, um, you use this plan view, which um, allows you to, to calculate erosion for each field, but it, it stores it in one file so that you'll have a, 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 a whole plan for a farm. So you, you won't have to have separate files for each, uh, each field. And so to get started, you'll just uh, click on this icon, open management. And um, your choices, um, these are the crop management zones. These have been built by NRCS specialists, you know, 
throughout the region. And so they have a, a lot of pre-built rotations for all different crops for single year and, and multiple year. And so um, the CMZ you'll load will depend on which, which part of the state you're doing plants in. Those uh, CMZ is crop management zone. And so the way the way these cover Maryland, um, CMZ 59 is basically covers most of the Eastern shore, except maybe the, the Piedmont area of Cecil. Um, CMZ 66 is Southern Maryland, uh, basically the coastal plain areas of the Western shore. Uh, CMZ 65 um, is basically the, the Piedmont areas of, of the Western shore. You know, everything from Cecil all the way to um, Allegheny County. And then um, CMZ uh, 0 0.41 is pretty much everything west of the Continental Divide. So a lot of this, this water is actually flowing into the Ohio River and eventually down into the Gulf of Mexico. Okay, so for today, um, we do most of our PFTs on the, on the Eastern Shore, so we're gonna go ahead and um, use the CMZ 59. And then um, we'll go ahead and, and look at the single year, single crop template. And so we'll go ahead. And so uh, within that, you'll have all these different crop categories that you have to choose from. So corn grain, silage, um, soybeans, forages, uh, vegetables. And then we'll go into the corn grain one and we'll, we'll pick one of these corn grain um, crop rotations. And so we'll, we'll select this corn grain um, SCTW. So that, that stands for spring planted. Um, Chisel, uh, chisel uh, twisted points. And so uh, again, uh, as I mentioned in our uh, help section on our web page, there's a, a file with all these abbreviations. So that's that's where we get this. Uh, chisel was, I'm uh, sorry, uh, uh, chisel with twisted shanks, uh, which is actually your most aggressive one. That's the one that you'll see the, uh, more soil erosion from that. And so once you select that, this is what it pulls up. Um, so it has a lot of the background information and, uh, on the top, a lot of the assumptions that went into this rotation when they built it. And then at the bottom, it, it, it shows you the rotation, what was built. Um, so uh, for the corn rotation, it, it actually starts from the previous year's harvest to, to do a one year rotation. <laughs> so it, it covers the weed growth um, and then, um, that ends, uh, and, and one thing one thing that you do in Russell too when you build a rotation, you have to basically say when one crop en when one crop ends. So uh, the the chisel operation basically kills the weeds, so um, it's the end or start of the next crop year. And then again, when you get down to the harvest um, for the corn harvest killing crop, fifty percent standing stubble. That's what tells it the the end of the year rotation. Okay, and this was just, a, I wasn't sure if that was gonna show up well enough, so I, I took a subset of that, um, to, just so you can see the operations better. So, so the, there's a whole bunch of different operations, um, a chisel, all, a bunch of disc operations, uh, planter, double disc opener, uh, any herbicide applications. Um, so the whole list of anything that you would do um, based on that, farmers operations within, within the growing season. And then um, a lot of times, um, you know, there's a lot of specific information in Russell too, and, and we don't get that um, necessarily when we when we visit a farmer. So within that, again, the um, documents under Russell too on our website, in that uh, Maryland NRCS guide, there are a couple of sheets that would be useful if you need to collect information. So this, uh, it's basically a sheet you can talk with the farmer about to, to basically get down uh, each of the operations he does and and the date he does them. And then uh, just a quick checklist here. Here's a, another record keeping thing where you can just check off the, uh, a lot of times trying to remember all the different options you have, like, for example, for disc or for, for chisel, 
um, it, this, this puts them all right in front of you. If you want to talk to the farmer, he will be able to just say, uh, from looking at this list, he'll be able to give you a better idea of which ones to, that you'll be putting into Russell. Okay, so, so basically we have um, this rotation that's built, been built by an RCS specialist for, for um, crop management zone 59. And so in most cases, when you pull one of these um, rotations up, it's gonna have most of the stuff you need. You don't have to go through uh, the tedium of entering all these different things in. So usually what, what we end up doing when we're, um, when we're creating a rotation specific to a farmer, you might start with one of these um, rotations from the CMZ, but um, you can make modifications to it. So let's say I wanted to change, you know, the, this this operator used a different type of chisel. So we're going to um, change the twisted shovel to chisel straight points. So basically, you click on this little down arrow in the right side of the operation box for that operation. And then it'll give you this drop down list. So then you just scroll to the point where you find the, the chisel operation you need, select it, and then it'll pull that in. So we have, we have that in here now. Um, one thing that happens when you make modifications um, to a rotation, uh, it'll change, uh, it'll kind of set back to default the end start of crop year. Um, so you, you'll have to go back in and th this is like a toggle. So if you just click on where it says no, it will uh, change it back to yes again. And then the other thing um, we might want to change that was in the, the pre-built, they assumed a, a yield goal of 125 for corn grain and we're going to bump that up. Uh, so after going through and making those changes, um, we uh, we uh, increased the corn grain yield to, to 180, which will give you more residue. and help you with your erosion score. And then some of the other things you can do also, you, you may not have all the operations uh, or your operator might not have all the operations that are showing up in this rotation. So you can actually remove some of the ones that you're not gonna use. So basically you come down to the row, like uh, let, let's say we don't need to do two, two separate operations of the, the, the this tandem secondary operation. So we're going to go down, right click on the second one. Uh, this menu will pop up and then you can just click on delete row. And then it's taken that one out. Now we just have one tandem disc. And again, um, okay, this is, I, I actually it changes it. It set it to no and I, I switched it back to yes. And um, that's the yield goal of 180 again. Okay, so once once you've made the changes that, um, let's say this has made it a, a specific to this farmer's operation, you don't want to have to come back next year and do all these um, over again. So uh, with this operation open, you just go and you'll save it. Um, so you'll click on File, Save As, and because this is checked, we're we're in the last directory. Uh, that we opened a file in. And so we need to, uh, we can't save information in here. These are the NRCS uh, pre-built rotations and they're they're right protected, but there is a folder on within uh, CMZ 59 where you can save information. So if you just click this, um, this folder with the up arrow, it'll take you back up. Um, and when we get to the main uh, subfolder for CMZ 59, we're going to want to click on other local management records. Um, and once we're in that folder, we'll be able to save the file. And so we'll just um, give it the name of the farmer and then just enough information about the operation um, that uh, you'll, you'll know what it is when you want to do it, plan for next year. And um, you may not, you, you may not need too many operations. Like you're not going to, um, need to do a corn grain every year it's going to be that same operation you use and then you you might have another operation for you know for soybeans and so we'll go ahead and save it and so now um that is now saved as uh as an operation for for his corn grain uh now let's say we we want to um 
make an operation for another rotation that might be slightly different, we can use this, this operation that we just saved as the base for creating a new one. And so what we're gonna do now, um, we're, let's say we wanna do a, a rotation that includes a manure application. So you right click here, um, the menu pops up, You'll at this time select insert new row. Oops. Um, sorry about that. Okay, so um, when you insert a row, what it does is it makes a copy of the row just above. Uh, so it, it gave us a duplicate of again weed row. So what we're going to do is um, again click on this down arrow on the right side of the operation box, and um, basically this drop down list of operations has you know, everything in the CMC. Uh, and so rather than scroll through the whole list, once you open this, once this uh, drop down box comes down, if you hit like the first letter of the operation you want, like in this case, I hit N for manure and that it got me pretty close. And then I um, selected manure spreader, solid and semi-solid. Okay, and so, so put that in, but again, um, Whenever you delete or um, insert a row, it um, resets these. So we're gonna we're gonna change the date um, to to a spring application. We're gonna set these back to yes, and um, so we're gonna we change the date to um, April first in, in year two. The, within uh, Russell, they don't give you actual years. They they basically give you the first second year of the rotation or in this case it's a it is a one-year rotation but this is starting from the, the previous calendar year so it gives it a different number and one thing to be careful too when you um, are changing dates be careful not to temporarily get a date that for this that's earlier than this first date or later than the second date or uh, russell 2 will give you an error message and you'll you'll have to retype it Okay, then the other thing, um, we're adding manure. And so um, with that, Russell 2 is adding additional cover material for this for this field that will also help um, reduce er erosion. And so the, the um, question is, how much um, do you need to add uh, within Russell 2? And so the, I, I did this as um, a beef scenario where we are applying 10 tons per acre. Um, but Russell 2 wants you to add this in is in pounds dry matter per acre. And so here are some of the, the guidelines from the Russell 2, uh, the NRCS guidance. Um, so these are the, the manure residue effectiveness guidelines. So um, liquid slurry, semi-solid and poultry aren't as effective in retarding erosion. Um, you know, they, they kind of break down faster and, and don't stay on the surface of the soil as much. And so when you're doing a calculation for dry matter, the, the, the final step that you have to do is multiply the, the dry matter by 50%. And then if, if you're in a case where it is a solid manure, um, in cases where there's bedding involved other than poultry, then you don't have to do that, do that modification. So th these are the NRCS equations um, for when you're putting that residue in. And so again, um, for liquids, um, gallons per acre times the density of water times percent solids as a decimal. So, so the way you get this um, from your manure analysis, um, you, you may not get percent solids, but you get percent liquid. Um, you know, 100 minus percent liquid is percent solid, and then you just express it as a fraction. Uh, so. Um, that will give you the pounds per acre dry matter. So the example for, for liquid, um, 10,000 gallons per acre times 8.34 times um, 0 0.02 solids of so 2%. Uh, so they would say that you would enter um, 1668 pounds of dry matter per acre, but then the effective residue adjustment, you'd multiply that by 0.5. And so within that box in Russell, you'd only put in 834. 
And so again, you do the same thing with semi-solids, um, but for solids, you just calculate the, the um, pounds break for dry matter. And, and then again, here, there are guidelines again, um, which categories of manure you'll, you'll probably use each equation for. So equation A for liquid semi-solids. Uh, B, uh, uh, so, so there is a, a little overlap. Um, so for beef, if it's um, in a case, um, depending where it's collected, uh, you would use that equation A, um, which I think they're assuming um, lower percent solids for that. Uh, whereas if it's on an open lot, it's going to dry out more, so you'll have a higher percent solid. So uh, they use a, a higher percent there. And then um, let's see. And then in, in, in some cases, this might be handled as a liquid, whereas this might be handled as a solid. As far as the application rate, you know, this would be tons per acre. Okay. Okay. So so this was the example I used for for this. Uh, operation so 10 tons per acre of manure 2,000 pounds per ton um, uh, 15 percent solids uh, gave 3,000 pounds per acre dry matter and then divided or multiplied by 0. 0.5 gave 1,500 pounds per acre I put that in the wrong place sorry about that so that's what went that's what went in here into um so when I added this manure it it put this um you know automatically the, the manure is semi-solid but it had an extremely low value for cover material until I did that calculation and then you know you can basically enter stuff straight into the cell okay so now we have a second um, rotation. And so we're gonna to wanna to save that also. So again, we'll go to file, save as, and we'll take um, this file name, but then we'll add with beef manure, hit save. And then we have um, basically two different rotations in now for, for this example farmer. Okay, and then one other thing we should look at are multi-year rotation templates. So again, for CMC 59, um, we'll choose the multi-year forage rotation. We'll go with uh, orchard grass, fall seeding, so three years of hay. And so that's what um, we get here. So basically, um, Planted, fall planted, first year, um, first harvest is next June for three harvests that year. Fertil fertilizer application um, in the spring of the second year and then three more harvests. And so um, let's say in, in a case where you don't necessarily make any changes, let's say we'll just use this one as is. Um, a lot of times it, it might be good just to again, save that in with that as, that farmer's rotation, just so you don't have to try and remember what you did the previous year and which one you used. Okay. And uh, so let me go back. And so um, once you've um, finished the rotation, you have it open, you, you can print it. So we're going to um, print the management scenario. Um, so you go to you, you, you have to have it open to print it. And once it's open, you go to this, um, again, the file menu, print report. And then it'll, it'll take you to the printing folder within the NRCS folder on this computer. And so we want to choose the uh, ANMP management printout. And um, it'll pull that in here. And then once you hit open, the report will open as a Word file. And uh, which is good because you you can edit it and then save that with with anything else you add to it. So you you can give some information about the operation, uh, especially for the documentation you want to have for your PMT that you you might have in that farmer's file. 
And so, and, and the other the other thing about building these um, rotations, um, you only have to do it once. So if you have multiple multiple fields with corn grain, uh, you can just show what this rotation is and just type on onto this word file which fields um, this rotation applies to for this year for your PMTs. And so it basically gives you that that whole rotation that we saw in, in the Russell two program. Okay, so let me go back. Okay, so once you have all your rotations in, um, we're going to go to the point where um, we're going to open a plan for the farmer. And so that's that's the the plan is something where we put all the information in we've gathered, including this rotation we just made, and we we put that into a in the plan for the into the plan for the field and it will calculate the erosion for us. Now there are different there are different ways of looking at data within Russell 2. Uh, so profile view will look at one field with only one erosion scenario. Worksheet will look at um, one field, but you can do different scenarios. So NRCS uses that if it, they want to show you know how one scenario benefits in reducing erosion over another. But for our purposes, we want to do the plan view. Um, the advantage of that is it puts everything in one file. You don't have to have like four or five different worksheets, especially if you have a bunch of different farmers. You have like one plan for the farmer for a year. And then the other thing too, um, we have these printouts that are more streamlined where they just um, show the stuff, just the stuff we need to do the PMT. So there's, if you if you print the profile view, there's a bunch of other information that that's not, it, it's more of, uh, kind of uh, catered to um, people who are doing conservation plans and are, are looking at different structures for reducing erosion and and a conservation building conservation practices. Okay, so again, uh, you click on this um, plan icon that's uh, supposed to be a watershed. And then, um, so if you're just starting out, you won't have any plans in there. You'll have this default. And so you go ahead and click on that, open it. And then it'll give you this, this screen, uh, which is your, your basic template for, for calculating erosions for multiple fields. Um, now, one thing you wanna be careful of doing, make sure when you save this, to make sure you um, rename it, otherwise you'll, you'll overwrite your default template with with some other operators template. Okay, so you come into here, the, the first thing you'll do, you'll put the owner's name, um, location, which will um, basically give you the um, climate data for your location. So you'll, you'll basically choose your county and it'll give you the climate information for that county. And then uh, for information, anything regarding the fields being evaluated that might be pertinent for like for your doing the PMT. Okay, so um, so to okay, so you, you'll just type the farmer's name in to choose location. Again, you click this drop down arrow, um, navigate to your county. Um, so we'll again choose Queen Anne's in this case. And so now we have the top part um, completed, uh, and so. The, the farmer, the, the county, and then um, just the purpose we're doing this, uh, 2023 erosion calculations for fields needing PMTs. Okay, now to, to get into the, um, the point where we're actually putting the data in, um, we'll open a worksheet for a field. So we click on this to enter the first field, and it, it'll give you this screen. And so the first thing you'll do when you come into here, You'll um, you know, give the field name that you're doing it for, and then the next step is um, putting in the soil information. So this is something you will have gotten from either Web Soil Survey or QGIS to know the dominant mapping unit. And so in this case, we're gonna. Uh, and the other thing is, you will have imported the Queen Anne County soil data into your database when you when you set it up. When after you after you install it, that'll be something you'll 
add to it as you set up the database for your county. Uh, so in this case, we're going to uh, select Matter Peak Silt Loam 0 to 2% slope. And for many of these map units, they might have different components. Uh, in this case, the main component is Matter Peak Silt Loam. And so if there is more than one component, you just click on the one with the larger percentage. Okay. Um, and so in this case, uh, type in the field number. Um, okay, these, uh, I'm sorry, these are the default uh, values when you first open the screen. So, so we're going to put in the field number, select the soil, um, slope length, and percent slope. And then we're going to um, pull in one of the base managements we created before. And so for this case, then um, again, it says the Matter Peak, uh, the slope we measured for this field um, in QGIS was uh, the slope length was 200 feet, 1% slope. And then uh, the next thing we do then is we'll go to this base management, click on this arrow, choose CMZ 59. Um, and then we'll go to where we saved it, other local management records. John Lewis corn grain. Okay, and so it'll pull that in. And then um, this isn't required to put in, but I, I usually put this in because um, what this description is, is what will show up when, it, when you go back into plan view. Right now we're on in the worksheet view, which is the view for one field. Um, but once you're in plan view and if you have multiple fields, it's, it's good to know kind of which rotation you're using because it, it doesn't pull the information from here into the into the plan view. And so now that we have this first field done, we'll go ahead and minimize the worksheet. And that'll put us back in plan view. You'll see it, it has that first field home one corn grain. And now we'll go ahead and hit save as. Uh, give it give the plan a name, uh, John Lewis plan 2023, save it. Okay, and then, so now we have um, our first field in the plan. Uh, so for this corn grain on, on home one, the soil loss in tons per acre per year is, is one ton. And so now we're ready to, to create a new field. So we'll click on this plus and that will um, basically uh, create a new field, which is, uh, initially it's a copy of the first field. And then to edit that field, you click again on the, the, this folder for the worksheet. And we'll go ahead and um, put this data. So we put this data in uh, home two, uh, Hamilton Sandy loan for the soil type, uh, different slope length and uh, percent slope. And then um, for the base management, we went back to that uh, C folder and we chose the corn grain with beef manure management rotation. And then again, I, I just type this um, description in so that when I go back to plan view again, you know, once, once you look at a bunch of fields, if you don't have this description, you won't, um, you might not be able to tell again, which, which um, rotation you're using just by looking at it. And so in this case, um, for field two, with this rotation, different soil type, we're getting uh, 1.7 tons of soil loss per year, per, per acre per year. And, and again, as far as um, erosion concern, um, these are both under the T value, which is something that's shown for, uh, further up on the screen. And for, for those of you who are, are not familiar, the T value is the tolerable soil loss per year. So for, for these fields, uh, I think that the tolerable soil loss, soil loss is three or four tons per year. And so when you're under that value, then you're, uh, you're, not, you're, you're within a reasonable range. You're building more soil each year than you're losing. Okay, so again, um, did the same thing. We um, added a third, third field. Um, 
again it made a made a copy of the second one and then we're gonna click on the folder again to edit it okay so again the uh, field name uh edit the soil map unit which may or may not for some fields um and then um new slope length new percent slope and we're choosing the uh going back to that uh local records C folder and pulling up the orchard grass rotation. And um, one thing I put on this description with that, I noted that it's a three-year rotation. And uh, the reason for doing that is um, when you're uh, doing a three-year rotation, the, the policy by NBA is when you're doing a PMT, you have to use the, the annual soil loss for the, for the year in the rotation that you're writing the plan for this year. Okay, so for, for multiple year crop rotations, we'll, we'll go to profile view to see the annual erosion. So again, when you're in worksheet view, you can, you can kind of um, telescope in even more to get a more detailed view of the field. And so in profile view, um, at the bottom of, of, of the profile view page, if you click on this additional results tab, uh, it will open up this table um, of the annual soil loss for each year of the rotation. And so uh, let's say we were in the first year of this rotation. Um, Russell's going to calculate an average soil loss for the whole rotation. But when we do the PMT, we're going to um, want to use the one for this year that we're doing the PMT for. And so going back to the, the plan, uh, plan view page, it, we, if we look at the average soil loss for this um, orchard grass rotation, it's over three years, it's um, basically 0.4 tons soil loss per, per year, uh, tons per acre per year. But really in this year, because you're just establishing it, it's um, higher, it's gonna be uh, 0.57 tons per acre per year. Um, there are other factors addressed in, in profile view that can be important for certain soils. Um, because most of our um, PMTs are done on the eastern shore, we haven't run into these a lot, but, but once in a while we do. So Russell 2 uses the um, KF soil, soil er erodibility factor. So that's just the fine component of the soil. Um, you know, if it's a silt loam, it's, it's basically those um, finer particles sand, silt, and clay. Um, so if there are significant surface rock fragments present and you don't enter them, the erosion will be overpredicted. And so um, the way Russell defines it is those fragments that are greater than three-eighths of an inch in size. Um, and in, in Maryland soils, the average is 11% by volume. And so um, now the way you'll, you'll know whether your soils may need this. It, if you look at the soil map unit, the modifier, what it, what it tells you, the texture, the modifier before, right before the texture um, tells you whether you need um, to add rock fragments. So if there's no modifier, if it's just a silt loam, um, you could put in, uh, if you wanted to, you could put in 3% rock fragments. Uh, if, if it says channery silt loam or gravelly, um, you're somewhere in this range, 15 to 35. Uh, and if you, if you don't do a field measurement, um, NRCS recommends putting in 15%. And then these you know, very channery or very shaley, uh, you can put in to up to 35%. And then um, to adjust the rock cover, um, you go back to profile view. Uh, step 4C, and then there's just a little box here to put that information into. So you um, go ahead and put the um, percent rock fragments from, from that table. Okay, so um, as far as printing Russell 2 plans then, um, again, you can print it while it's still open, or if you haven't printed it, you open the plan again. And it's kind of the same thing with um, printing the rotations. You'll go uh, to file, print report. 
and then um, it'll be a, a different report for the, the, the erosion plan. So ANMP plan printout with details. And then you go ahead and click open. And the same thing, the report will open as a Word file, which you can edit and save. And so <laughs> this, um, this report produces a nice summary of just the information we need. Um, and it's also a check to, to confirm that you entered everything <laughs> um, that you, you intended to enter when you're calculating the erosion for this field. So it's a good, good um, quality control check. And so the, the top table for each field, it shows you um, what map, map unit you chose, uh, the actual the T value, the tolerable soil loss for each one. So you know that as long as your erosion is under these values that you're, um, you, know, you don't have a, a serious erosion problem. Uh, and then the, the slope length you, you entered from your QGIS calculations as, long, as well as the uh, percent slope. And then the lower table, sorry, gets down to um, the, 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 the amount of erosion calculated. So it, it shows you the management you used. So this, the C factor component. So in this case, the, um, the corn grain uh, for, for John Lewis, in this case, corn grain with beef manure, and then the, the orchard grass through your rotation. And then it shows you the, um, the, the uh, soil loss conservation plan soil loss. So these are the values that you would enter into the PMT. On a, and you, you put them in on the um, particulate page of the PMT. And then it, it includes some other useful information um, for um, looking at soil quality. So the soil conditioning in, index and then the, the intensity of the, the tillage that you're using. And then um, other factors that, that we put in from time to time that, um, yeah, I, again, I ha haven't run into many cases of this doing more more PMTs on the Eastern shore, but there have been a few cases where um, had to um, use the contouring feature on the pro profile page. Many times, um, if you're you're getting information from a farmer who, who has a contouring, he, he has probably a, a soil and water quality plan. And in that case, NRCS has probably already calculated that and, and may even have um, an erosion value for you. And, and that's the, the other thing I want to mention that if um, if NRCS in your conservation plan has calculated erosion for your fields, um, you're, it's perfectly okay for you to take those values and, and plug those straight into them and skipping this whole process. And then uh, going back again to, to field um, three, because it was a three-year rotation, we're not going to use this, um, this 0.5, we're going to use this, uh, the 0.57 tons of soil loss. Okay, and that, um, and then it, uh, so I, what I did in that case, um, because this is a Word file, you can, you can edit it, and then um, I kind of just, um, clip this from Russell to and pasted it at the bottom, just so you have documentation as to what value you used. And then just other information that is printed by default on the printout, just to, to tell you all the components that were, that were used on it. Okay, well, that, uh, that finishes up. Uh, now, uh, were there any questions?